first let me introduce Don Dantzler, as always, Director of Marketing. We'll be moderating. Don, say hello. Hi, everybody. There we go. Um, that way they know I have real friends and not just imaginary ones that I talk to. So she is here moderating. If you have any questions at all during the uh, entire production, just post them up and she will let us know about them and we'll answer every single question you guys have. Joining us today from our location, our design center in Katy, Texas, is a longtime Tilson employee. We decided y'all did not have enough Eric yet, so we got another Eric, Eric McKiernan, is joining us today. Eric, tell everybody hello. Hello. All right, and I'm going to give Eric a little bit of time here to tell us about kind of his journey, what brought him to Tilson. He's, like I said, been here 15 years. Tell us about when you started, where all you've been, and a little bit about, uh, about your path, man. So I moved to Texas in the summer of 05, and about a month later, um, got a job with you guys. And uh, I was at the Houston location, which we no longer have, for seven months. And then you guys sent me over here in February of 06 when it opened. And I've been here in the Katy location every day it's been open since, um, which we had our 14th anniversary at this park last month, February. And this summer, like you said, will be 15 years for me. So all in sales, and it's my only sales job. I didn't do sales before I came here. Um, and if I had to have only one sales job, this is the one I want to have. So. <laughs> well, we're lucky to have you. Thanks, man. Thanks so much for that. Thank you for your 15 years of of uh, service. And thank your children for sharing you and your your time and your weekends with us for the last 15 years. Uh, we appreciate that. And, and um, it's been a real blessing to us. So... Uh, Today, you're going to take us through a, um, a home here in Fort Bend County, Texas, not too far actually from, uh, from y'all's location there in Katy, just on the south side of I-10. Tell us a little bit about um, this family's journey and, and what they built and why, man. Go right ahead. So um, I went ahead and switched to the first slide there. So <clears throat> these folks, um, they've got uh, children and they um, work in the area, in the greater Houston area and they wanted to settle in at some family land uh, that the uh, husband's father had. So he cut out some land for them out in the Fulcher area. And um, they started talking to us about being able to build a house on it. So they've had a few, um, you know, we had our typical things. They had to get their survey and get the survey done properly to show the cutout and deal with some utility easements from the power company. Um, but they were uh, determined, no matter what the obstacles were, to to move forward with that part. And um, on our end, as is very, very common, I was trying to help them figure out how to get something that met their needs and also met some of their wants while staying within whatever budget we had to work with. So for sure. For sure. So folks, be sure you ask questions as we go along here. If you got any questions at all, Don is moderating for us. So don't hesitate. Ask any questions. Eric's going to take us a little bit through uh, uh, floor plan that they chose, kind of changes they made to it, how he went about making those changes and what the final product looked like. So go right ahead, Eric. All right. So this is the exterior. This is a former plan. We don't actually have it any longer, but this is the exterior that we started with. And this is the floor plan that went with that exterior that we started with. And on the floor plan, there were numerous things the customer was trying to address. So uh, for instance, and we'll see a little bit of this when we get to the next slide, but we wanted to do some stuff with the master bath. Um, this particular plan had a tub shower combo only. Um, and uh, we wanted to address that, get a separate tub and shower. They actually also liked our Fredericksburg layout outside where the master bath had the sink separated around a corner tub and then the shower opposite with the closet at the end. And obviously you can see in this plan, it didn't have any of that except that the bathroom's in the corner. Um, so we'll see some of the work we did to accomplish that. Also, while we're on this slide, we'll talk a little bit about this kitchen. Um, this kitchen had a small pantry. It had a lot of cabinets, but some of the cabinets were actually in kind of the breakfast area here. Um, 
and a small bar area. And again, they were hoping to open that up some more. Um, it's been very common the last couple of years to do more of a all one level bar uh, and to kind of have it be open around both ends and, and make it feel much more open to uh, the family room. So we, what our process involves is I get with the customer and ask a lot of questions and try to figure out what it is they're trying to accomplish both with the land and where they're moving, but also what they want to do with the house. And uh, we take that original slide that we were on here and you take something like that and I mark it up with red, making the changes that the customer is requesting so that I can do some measurements and do some pricing. And so you can see in here, this copy is a little light, but <clears throat> you can see in the bathroom here, we went to corner toe with a nice big window. We've got separate vanities here. We've got more vanity with linen. We've got a shower over here. We've got a master closet that's been relocated to be inside there instead of out in the bedroom. We added a powder room to this house. Excuse me. We, yeah, so Eric, I noticed real quick. I noticed that uh, as soon as I pulled the plan up before we started, that they're in the master bath. Like it is almost a a carbon copy out of y'all's Fredericksburg model that that you have there in Katy. So clearly, they they, they kind of walked in, saw the model, which people inevitably do. That people typically buy what they see because there's some safety there. There's some security. You kind of know how it feels, know what it looks like, and. So I, I love the way that you were able to take that bathroom and without adding really any square footage to, at, that, at that part anyway, able to kind of accommodate that, move it back maybe maybe just a little bit. It turned out really nice. Great job. Thank you. So speaking of which, I'm glad you pointed that out. So a lot of times when you're doing that, so customers will say, uh, whether it's one of the models we have here or somewhere else, they'll see a home in person at one of our locations and they'll be like, I like the kitchen from this other plan or the master bath from this other plan or whatever but the Fredericksburg didn't fit in their budget. Um, and so usually when you do something like that, the Fredericksburg bathroom we tried to kind of recreate here, it would not have normally fit in this house without adding square footage, except for the fact that they actually didn't need the fourth bedroom. So if we go back, you'll see that, and it's labeled on here as bedroom two, but once we got rid of it, the numbers changed, but that bedroom actually went away um, so that they could have the larger bathroom and larger utility room so that bedroom we just reallocated that square footage to do this and yes you know visually that helps me as well if, if a customer says i like the bathroom from house x that gives me something to work with rather than i just want the bathroom to be different than it is um and so we try to ferret that out as well when we're talking to customers about um so we actually you know it's not identical to the Fredericksburg bath but it is pretty heavily based on that bathroom. Um, it is also this island that's in the kitchen that we'll get to in a minute is actually basically a copy of the one in the Fredericksburg. Um, so yes, that's those are some things that we were accomplishing. Those are, you know, when, when we're talking to a customer, if they're telling me, you know, I need something different in the bathroom, I want both a tub and a shower. I don't want the tub shower combo and I want this. We got to find out, hey, do you want you know, do you want the tub in the corner? Do you just want it in a rectangle? Do you want it next to the shower? Are the vanities okay together or split? Um, so there's a lot of flexibility there and control that the customer has over what they're trying to accomplish. And then my role is to try again, back to what we said earlier, to help them accomplish as much of that as possible with the budget we have to work with. Um, so you know, lay out so take us over to the, uh, the the family room area. Does it looks like double doors going out into a outdoor living space? Tell me a little bit about that. Yes. So we did the um, uh, we added a back porch. This house did not have one, and um, did double doors from the family room straight out on. So we got double doors uh, with uh, windows, tall windows on each side, and transom windows above all of that. So there's lots of light coming in. Uh, from that back porch into that family room. Uh, we did a nice tall ceiling on the porch as well so that we could get all the windows and light into that family room. Um, and that direction, uh, where their property is located at, in that direction, you know, there's a lot of uh, 
property and trees and stuff. Um, there's not, you know, really any buildings or houses back that way. So it's nice. They were trying to maximize that view out that direction. So, uh, also, so like I mentioned earlier that we, this house didn't have a power room. So we added that utility is a little larger up here in the front, the, the guest bath and bedrooms two and three, other than changing the number here to two instead of four, those three rooms didn't change at all. Um, what was a formal dining has been walled in uh, with a door to become a study. Uh, and by walling that in, it gave us some flexibility to do some more stuff in the kitchen. Um, so again, going back here, this had an opening and a small pantry and all these cabinets in order to increase the dining area without, again, we added some square footage, I'll, we'll see here on the next slide. We did add some, yeah. um, but we would add, add more, except we were able to move some of those cabinets out of there and give them more width here and move those cabinets down to this wall now that this is no longer open to the dining and has become a study. So they've got a larger pantry, they switched appliances, you got double ovens, cooktop. Um, also, uh, so let me go here, actually next. So again, here's the, the differences in those, you know, you got a bedroom here and a small master bath that have now become a larger utility and a much larger master bath with a lot of different features that weren't in there before. Uh, and this is a nice all tile shower with no door and a big bench seat. Um, it turned out beautiful. The tub is in this corner with the window. So we'll see some photos of that in a moment. And then again, the kitchen over here, I mean, completely different layout uh, here on this. Uh, yeah, tell us about tell us a little bit about that island. And folks, again, just jump in with any questions that you might have along the way. Eric's going to tell us a little bit about this island because it's clearly something they saw somewhere else, probably one of our models. But tell us about that. I think it looks massive. Sure. So that thing is roughly about nine foot by four foot on the surface area. Um, and it is um, based on the design of the one outside in the Fredericksburg model here in the Katy location. And um, so it, uh, we actually, let's jump forward, we'll come back to their plan in a second and we'll come back to that. There's an island shot here in a minute. So oh, that is copied off that design, like I said, that's outside in the Fredericksburg. So, and we'll, it is a beautiful island and we'll, we'll come back there in a moment. So, um, but yes, all one height. And again, based off of something they saw and decided they wanted. Um, so, so what are we looking at here? What is this is what drafting? So once I so once I take what's on the left here, mark it up in red with what's on the right, um, after I review that with the prospective customer and get it and all, all the pricing that goes with it, when they're ready, we sign an agreement. And then I come in and you can see all these numbers. I've labeled all the various changes with numbers and I turn it into drafting with a list explaining what those numbers are. And then drafting draws up a new plan of this for the customer um, to come and review with us. And so this is the, the version that drafting presented. It's got you know, no more red in it. It's actually now showing the shower and the corner tub and the window and the island, the bigger utility, the powder room, all that stuff's now been kind of officially put into a plan. This one actually shows here, you've got where their utilities are gonna connect, which we gathered that information at stakeout, the back porch, the double doors. Um, so yes, yeah, so then we meet and we review that and sign off on that and send it out to construction. Uh, one of the other things we changed, we pop back a few slides here to the beginning. So again, remember what the exterior of this looked like. So it's got two gables, okay? And we ended up with two gables, but if you'll notice the slope here, what we call the roof pitch, that roof pitch is a little lower than it is on some houses and a lot of times by increasing that it gives the house a little bit of a different look architecturally and also then just small changes to materials so we'll get to the whoops let's see so we get to the photo 
here of the first photograph. Wow, that's a yeah. big difference. So yeah. let's take a little quick, little quick time out here so that you're looking at different. And I see uh, Donna, do we have any questions yet? We do are... have a few questions. Awesome. All right, Eric, you, you ready for this? All right, fire away. Okay. So Karen is asking, is it easier, better for me to mark up a floor plan or to just come in with a wish list? Okay. So uh, I wonder if that's the same Mrs. Edmondson that's talking to Curtis. So um, actually a little bit of both. Either way is fine. Um, you can come in and sit down with your consultant and um, discuss with him what you're looking for. And you guys may figure out a plan to use and then they can make notes. But if you already kind of have an idea that you think you want to start with a certain plan and you have some ideas, sketching it out, even if that doesn't end up being the final version, so to speak, uh, any kind of visual aid that you can give us is helpful. It's the same with that bathroom coming out of the model. Instead of just telling me I want X, Y, Z, being able to say, I like the way this bathroom is. So if you sketch something out and say, this is kind of what I'm thinking, here's where I want stuff, that certainly helps us. Um, and yes, Eric, it is the same as Edmondson. Okay. And, and shout out to Curtis. <laughs> All right. The um, So yeah, you can go either route or a little bit of both. Um, it's just really a matter of what works best for you and how best you and your consultant communicate. Um, but like I said, visual aids, whether it's a drawing that you do or a, or a list or both, are both very helpful. Okay, very great. Uh, so Twilla is asking, is it any more cost effective to cut and paste layouts from another one of our plans to create what she wants or should we, versus designing from scratch? Like which way is, is more cost effective or, or is one more cost effective? So in my experience, I mean, if you're gonna try to create something from scratch, uh, that you're going to want us to price. The only way that's going to be to scale would be to um, go hire an architect and have them draw something, in which case you're going to spend money. Uh, whereas if you deal with one of us and talk about what you're looking for and either, you, again, you decide or with our help, you figure out, oh, well, house X has most of what I'm looking for, but I need to put the kitchen from house Y and the bathroom from house Z into that plan. Um, we're able to do that for you. And we don't, there's no fee for that. You work with a consultant, um, you know, we're, we're basically trying to answer your questions and help you understand what we can do for you. And if we do a good enough job of showing you that, you end up buying a house from us. And if we don't, you go your way and we don't make any money. So, but we don't charge you for that time. So if you can do it from a cost effective perspective, usually it's better to deal with one of us and try doing that. Um, but again, if you have something you've seen, even if it's a floor plan from online from somebody else, we can't technically copy that. But if it shows us what you're looking for, that again is a good visual aid that we can use to help you sort out your changes. Great. Yeah, that's a great, great question, Twyla. And I, all I would add to that would be, you know, unless you are just a residential designer for a living, like that's your trade, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put the burden on yourself to try and design something from scratch because trying to, you know, rely on these like Eric and and the uh, the whole team there, our, our whole team across the state. But you know, Eric's had a decade and a half of of working with um, customers, you know, day in and day out, year in and year out of, hey, you know, look, this island. You know, it's not going to work in this space you want it to work in, but here's what I can do. Or, hey, you know, you've actually got more space over here that we're not using that I can put some cabinets in. And and instead of having to, to, to dream it up from, from scratch, leverage their experience of uh, what, what has worked. Um, but, yeah, that's that's all I would yeah. – I wouldn't, wouldn't pressure yourself with that. Um, Absolutely. It's always, questions? always easier cool. to start with something than a blank sheet of paper. Yeah, it's hard. And then Don had a question about, can we make changes after it goes to drafting? <laughs> uh, and Don, I believe, is actually under contract with someone at Tilson right now uh, and uh, may even be a repeat customer. Uh, like, how do you know everything? I don't know. I just I see names in Goldmine and they stick out. We, so, we know our people. Uh, we love our customers. Uh, that's awesome. So, you can make changes throughout a large portion of this process, but the farther in your changes are, the more it costs you. So when you sign your agreement, you've made 
certain changes to that point. If you have additional stuff that you need to change, you need to get with your consultant uh, and talk about what those items are, how they might be accomplished, what the cost might be. Um, if it's before drafting draws the first version of the plan, then it's gonna cost whatever the items cost, but there are not any additional uh, fees. If it's after your plan's been drawn and you've approved it, then it starts getting a little bit more because the documents have to be redone, file has to be updated, uh, and yes, she says, yes, I am. Um, so, you know, again, the sooner the changes are finished, the better for continuity. Uh, but we try to be flexible. We understand that everybody doesn't always think of everything up front and they do need to come back to us. Maybe they ran into, well, not right now since we're all social distancing, but normally somebody runs into somebody at the supermarket and says they're building a house and, and their friend says, oh, did you think about this? Or they see something new on HGTV and the next morning they call their salesperson and say, oh, I never thought of this. Can I add it? Uh, and we try to accommodate those. It just gets more expensive the farther it gets in. Well, the really, it's it's not until, and correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, it's really not until they sign those plans, Correct. right? Like, uh, but no, if, so, so when these plans, for instance, he showed a while ago, when those came back for him and the customer to sit down and, and sign off on those plans, if there were some significant changes the customer wanted to make at that point, you just don't sign those plans. You know, we, we don't want you signing a set of plans that we're not going to really ultimately build. Um, and so we would make the changes. They would cost, what, again, like you saying, just the net differences. We wouldn't go charging you just for changing it at that point even. Um, what it costs is in the form of time, right? It's not, it's not even about the money so much at that point. Um, at least not for us. We're not charging any additional making changes then, but it has to go back in line in the drafting queue and come back through. Um, and a lot of our customers, once, you know, nobody's really ready to get started until they are. And then once they get started, they want it done. Um, and so every time that that has to go back through that design and drafting queue, no matter, I mean, it has to go, it has to go. We want it to be done right. This is your forever home. But just keeping in mind that every time it goes back through there, that's it's starting back at square, you know, whatever that square is. You're not, it's it's trying to cut the continuity. We want it started as quickly as possible for you. Um, and then now once you sign those plans, we do, we, we sign them so that we can start ordering stuff. Uh, cause things have lead times, right? So cabinets have lead times. Um, brick has lead times like, you know, eight, and nine weeks in some cases. So we don't want to wait until we need a product out in the field to order it then. Cause then your house sits for two months and nothing happens. So we actually do start framing electronically framing the house once you sign those plans. Um, and so then if you change something after that, then yeah, we may have to go stop purchase orders or stop shipping list or, redo the frame of the home um, from electric from a 3D standpoint. That's that's the only difference. Okay, great. Uh, that's all the questions that we have right now. So we pop All up. right, Eric, we'll pick up where you left well, off. Actually, right? back in. Okay. Right. So, um, so as you can see here in the drawing, the artist rendering of the original house, it was full brick across here. There was an arch over the front porch um, and again, the slope or pitch of those two gables was much lower. And so um, we removed some brick uh, and used the credit from removing the brick to add board and bat siding, which is a, a, a little bit of an option. It's a little more expensive than the regular lap siding that runs side to side. Um, and then make the gable steeper. And so by kind of moving those costs around, uh, some credit on the brick, but some charges in other places, we really gave the house a different look, um, much less like kind of a older traditional style brick home and a little bit more like the current kind of, you know, country farmhouse kind of look. So those, those changes didn't really end up being a cost much at all, if anything, to the customer. Um, but they made a significant, significant change in the appearance, style, and feel of the home. Yeah, that's a huge change. That's beautiful. Yeah. Good job. So thank you. And it was it was great. The customer, again, had ideas of what they wanted. We, we talked about some other home plans. Um, again, looked at some exteriors to get some ideas. So um, let's see. My mouse disappeared. All right. click, click a button, see what happens. That's my favorite thing to do. 
right? Uh, yeah, just start pushing stuff until you get a response. Yes. Uh, That's always works. Is that how you manage your employees? <laughs> yes, he just pushes me until I start to work again. That's right. <laughs> uh, all right, so um, there's the back porch we added, and here's a view, and uh, we may have a shot inside as well, but so nice tall windows, tall eight foot tall glass doors, and then transom windows across the top. So that's letting a lot of natural light in. Huge big picture window actually here that we added to the dining area instead of you know some smaller opening windows. Um, so, uh, and again, the wainscoting here with the siding above down the side, then the back of the home is all siding, which is relatively common for most of our plants. Um, and this house also, again, didn't have a garage originally, so we added a garage. It's attached, so it doesn't look like an afterthought. It's tied into the roof line. It's all connected. So the, um, and then the kitchen. That's so beautiful. It's stunning. The um, way different than what the original would have looked like. And it's got the nice walk-in pantry. Uh, again, they did some, you know, they also spent some money altering the appliances. We actually have double ovens here and then a microwave built in above it so that we could go to just the canopy style hood. Um, again, uh, the customer, um, she shared with me some specific stuff. She actually, um, while we were in the midst of making the other changes before the contractor would uh, get real close to time to sign the agreement, she actually sent me one day another picture um, that she had found somewhere and said, hey, can we do something like this? And it was a kitchen with some windows in there. So, um, and uh, Eric, as you mentioned earlier, one of the things we have to sometimes do when customers send us stuff is say, hey, that won't fit, or here's how you can accomplish that. And so in this particular case, I explained to her and I drew a little hand diagram and sent it to her by email to show her that, look, I can get windows in there, <laughs> but with everything else we're doing, and I do that, it's gonna remove a lot of the upper cabinets from that wall. Um, but she felt that the additional storage in the island and over on the oven wall was gonna end the huge pantry, so she she chose, you know, yep, I'm good losing those cabinets so that I can have those windows. So we uh, we did the windows, got the pantry. Here's that huge island. Um, we did some optional stuff. The subway here is is not one of the normal included features. That's an option. So was the courts. Um, is that all drawers on that against the wall in those cabinets? Is that all yes. drawers? Nice. Yes. So this one's fixed because the cooktop's there and then it's got the two here. They had me add uh, as an option here, both ends, drawers. Um, the island actually here, this is uh, one foot deep cabinets. So oh, really? I was thinking those were just panels. That's actually a cabinet? On both ends here inside Mars. these nice looking legs, that's cabinet on both ends. So there's storage on both ends of that island. Um, and uh, yeah, so just, there's a lot of storage. You know, when you look at it, you're like, oh, well, it's got one wall, partial wall and an island, that's all it's got. But there is so much storage. And then that huge pantry. Uh, and then also an optional floor here, uh, a, a vinyl plank choice. And Ari, it looks to me, are those, are those eight foot tall interior doors as well they did? At least here. Um, the... No, actually, by the front door, we went eight, and the family room. Eight, oh, at the front, that's what I'm looking at, okay. Yeah, in the kitchen here, this, um, so one thing about this plan, and they chose, again, they, they focused their money on certain places. This original house had an eight-foot ceiling, um, and so we stayed with the eight-foot, so this is a six-foot-eight door. Yes. Um, although, side note, when this plan went away, it was replaced by something called the Gonzales, which actually has some very similar features to some of the things I did for this customer. Um, the Gonzales is all nine foot ceiling. So anybody that was looking at, at this, the new version of, of this plan, it would have nine foot. But, um, and actually this door here in this picture, this picture was taken uh, probably by somebody picking up the construction fencing or something. Um, that I believe is a temporary version. Uh, the one that when I was out there, I want to say um, 
it may have been a different color or stain, but anyway, but they do have an eight foot door with the grid look. So again, a kind of nice country look. So nice. um, let's see here. All right, utility room, again, similar to the version that replaced it, the Gonzales and some of the others. Um, utility has shelving. You can always add cabinets if you'd like. This has a door going into the house and a door going out to the garage. Um, this is always a nice thing that a lot of people don't necessarily pay attention to, but the way we do our dryer vents even now, they're actually recessed into the wall, which means you can shove your dryer up closer to the wall, not have it sticking out into the utility room um, and still have your vent connected. Um, and then here, so much different than the original bathroom. Um, again, they gave me some pretty clear direction on what they wanted and we were able to make it work with uh, in their budget. Um, so the split vanity is different than the original house. Uh, having the tub and shower separate, the linen, those are all added things they did. Um, and in fact, even when you add this tub, normally this deck here would be tile and this window sill up here would be tile, um, but they also opted to go a little more with the money and have those match the countertops. Nice. So just nice little ways you can, you know, really kind of jazz things up. So let's pause here for just a second. Uh, Don, we got any questions or you folks can kick your questions in, ask us anything you like about design changes. Oh, there's a question. Is that yeah. a 58 vet? It's a 58. Nice. All right, Neil, what kind of car is that? Uh, there's a question in the meantime, uh, what is normally the turnaround time once the plan goes to drafting? So um, that's going to vary from time to time. Um, and there's various turnaround time if you're talking the whole process or turnaround time to get the plans back. To get the plans back um, over the years, when you turn a plan in, it's been anywhere from three weeks to many, many weeks. Uh, we had, you know, one year when we were transitioning software systems and we had a lot of customers all at one time, we got a little longer, but um, recent history, it's been about three to five weeks um, when you turn the plan in. And a lot of that just depends on how many customers are getting, signing their agreement at the same time. And then you meet with the sales consultant to review your plan. Um, now, I, I, real quick, Eric, I went, I, I cheated and I, I saw the question. I actually went into our uh, database and checked this exact plan. Um, okay. The one you're looking at and it, it took 18 days. So okay. uh, it was 18 days from that, the red line that, that Eric initially drew until drafting produced the, the, the full set. So same thing that t between two and three weeks, not quite three weeks. Sure. Uh, it was pretty typical. And it also depends on, I'm sure it was the number of changes, right? How, how complex are the changes? Right. Um, and, and that's, that's really the biggest driver, even, even more so than, than how many, uh, deals, but it's way, it's certainly more the, the complexity of the, the number and complexity of the changes. And I was off by a year on the vet. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, that is all the questions we have right now, but guys keep sending in your questions. Ooh, yeah. And we'll, uh, we'll tell us, uh, Obviously, the mirrors are missing from that. Uh, they had not been installed yet. That's one of the very last things that happened. So actually, interesting point, Eric. Uh, one of the ways we are flexible, this customer actually chose to take the credit for not having us do the mirrors because nice. she wanted some specific mirrors that she was going to shop for and put in after they closed. So Cool. Perfect. Um, so I want to let real quick the, the the towel bars and the uh, towel rings. You know anything anything particularly special that Silson does about that, Mr. McKiernan? Okay, so normally, uh, you you may have noticed here that we have two different colors going on between the towel rings and the faucets. So there's three styles of the hardware, the bath hardware, the rings and stuff. Um, this is the included style is this little kind of cone looking base but it comes in three colors and so normally we would order it to match the faucet finish or whatever the color is that's most similar however in this case the customer had us put in bronze um for those items because 
they plan eventually to swap out their faucets. They just were trying not to spend that money currently. So they stayed with the included Chrome faucets with us, but knowing that their intention was to change them, they had us do the bronze finish on the towel rings and towel bars and so forth so that they would be there in place already when they get around to swapping out the faucets. Yeah, and those are uh, important to note. We block behind the uh, sheetrock there. Those are blocked with two by sixes, two by twelves blocking so that those are not those are not mounted in the sheetrock. They're actually mounted in dimensional lumber in, in two by material. And we actually have a video somewhere of, of Eric Aller and hanging off of one. So Good, they stay. Uh, yeah. Doing chin on a towel bar? Oh yeah. I think well, it was like a robe hook in the driftwood. I think it was a robe like, hook, yeah. Hanging off of So uh, we on. It looks like we have a new question. <laughs> we and do. So my input, and Eric, you can throw in your input as well. Um, actually, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but this house was actually sold um, in 2019 and finished up recently to move in since the process does take a while. Um, so prices would have changed well, I mean, it was it was sold i looked it was sold in july of 19 and it's closing i mean it's it's yeah. done right. now so it took it took about nine months i mean that's so, about uh, 10 oh, months correct um, so I'll say historically up. it's about 80 well you can go i can go back 30 years of company history which we have that data actually 40 of, of this kind of data upgrade type of data base price and upgrade it's about 85 15 about 85% of the total contract price is the base and about 15% is upgrade. That's average historically for the last 40 years. Sure. For us. It never moves more than about three or four percentage points in a year. It may be 83, 17, it may be, you know, 88, 12, but, but historically you take the total contract price, 85% of that price is the base and about 15% of that price is, is options. Is sure. And, and also for Brian, um, because that plan doesn't exist any longer, but the one that replaced it actually has several of the items similar to what I did for the customer, they would already be included and you wouldn't need to add any cost for them. So the best way to kind of get some ideas budget wise is for you to go ahead and get with one of us uh, and let's talk about a current plan that we actually offer at current pricing and what you might want to do to it. Um, going back and giving you a number on something else is going to be an unrealistic idea of what, what really is, is happening. So, um, great question though. It's a good question. Yeah. I think probably guys, the biggest change on this one that, that actually impacted costs is adding the garage. There's that big structural change of adding all that square footage is probably going to be your biggest cost. Um, if Brian, if that, that helps any, yeah. Yeah. That was, I mean, again, with what the customer did, the, one of the largest add-ons was adding the garage. Um, second largest was probably the porch. And then in the bathroom, we spent a fair amount of money because it started out with a tub shower and went to shower and, and tub. But, um, oh, and in the meantime, not a question, but I guess, hi, Cassidy. I got a, a shout out from one of my customers said, hi, Eric there. So I wasn't sure which Eric she was saying hi to. I'm not talking to me. Don, you remember Cassidy, her and uh, her and her husband. Oh, did, yes. They're in one of our videos. Video. We have a video testimonial from them. Yes. Yeah, I realized that once I popped a picture up. Yeah. So. Thank you so much for doing that. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Here's another view of the bathroom just from another direction. There's the entrance to that shower. I don't actually think we, uh, because of the how the shower is designed, didn't really work real well to try to get a photo of the inside of it. But here's the master bedroom. <clears throat> nice light, couple of windows, nice big room there. Um, that actually is one of the few places that really, or one of the places that didn't change any at all in the house. So, um, and that's kind of the overview of those changes. Um, again, in addition to structural stuff, you know, tub, shower, garage, porch, island, um, just changing materials, you know, going to partial brick with board and bound on the outside, changing the floor, doing the courts, all little ways that, that 
the customer can make the home theirs. And, um, and so we just kind of explore all of those things um, when we get together. Yeah, so if you guys got any other questions, we'll be glad to answer them. Um, otherwise, we're, we, uh, we recommend you set an appointment right now, especially. We're, we're doing everything we can to, to be safe, both for our family and for yours. So uh, we're adhering to the various uh, orders of, of counties. We're, we are open, we are essential, but we are uh, practicing you know, no more than 10 people in one location, things like that. But we, we certainly can accommodate that, particularly during the week. Um, I know Eric, you, you guys have, are still having appointments, which is great. Um, still servicing our customers. We're still doing design center collections and um, signing off on plans, and and um, people are excited. So it's nice. Um, what else, Don? What else did we forget? Anything that we need to cover? No, I don't think so. Um, just that we're trying to decide if the next uh, Facebook Live is going to be Friday or Saturday. Um, so we'll update everybody on that later. But the topic will be energy efficiency. So it'll be a good one. Good one to tune into. Sounds good. Eric, any, any parting words for your all your fans out there? <laughs> uh, no, I just, I'll, I'll tag on to what you said. Um, anybody, whether it was one of the ones that asked a question or anybody else watching, uh, please reach out. Um, hello, Lisa. Thank you. Please reach out and. Uh, Eric brought his fan club today. An, I, get, I guess set an appointment up because, uh, you know, like I said, you know, the sooner we start meeting and discussing what you're trying to accomplish, uh, the sooner I can start working on helping to figure out um, what we can do for you. And yes, we are doing virtual appointments. We'll uh, FaceTime or Zoom, Rebecca. So um, we can we can do whatever you feel comfortable with. So we can do phone, email, virtual, and in person uh, right now, and uh, start figuring out what you're wanting. So I can figure out how to get it for you. Yeah, and on those virtual appointments, guys, we can do almost everything that we can do on a visit. So we can actually show, do some plan changes for you, show your prices, um, even go to contract if you are so inclined. So it's, it's you're not missing out by having a virtual appointment. All right. And Viviana just tuned in for the ending, but she's curious where we're located. Oh, we're in Katy, right on the highway. So you you can't miss us. But right uh, next to the Buckies. Yeah. We gotta yeah, go to Texas cool. Landmarks. Go yeah. to the Buckies. <laughs> I always forget about our new neighbors, the Buckies. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Viviana, that's where Eric McCurin is located. We do have 11 uh, design centers across the state. Um, so you can certainly go to our website, tilsonhomes.com, and see all the locations. Each location has a uh, model home that, uh, or at least one, in all, all but one cases, two model homes you could go for viewing, and we have virtual tours for them as well. So we're glad to reach out to you guys. If we can help you with anything at all, please let us know. You can reach out via Facebook, Instagram, our website. Uh, we'll be glad to help you. Otherwise, stay safe. We're so grateful that you joined us today. And thank you, Eric. And thank you, Dawn, for uh, managing all this. And we hope to make you guys soon part of the Tilson family. Come see us. Thank you, Eric. Bye, everybody. Bye.